It's not capitalism. Capitalism or free market capitalism doesn't do those things. Crony corporatism, cronyism does do those things. Cronyism basically says, I want a free market till I've got all the money and then the free market ends and I get to keep it. Smart cities, innovations in medicine and next generation defense technologies could all be realized through 5G internet. But wireless entrepreneur Declan Ganley says the US is losing the 5G race to communist China and largely has itself to blame. Ganley Shravada Networks wants to eliminate barriers to the wholesale 5G market by allowing anyone, smaller carriers, entire industries, even individual businesses, to buy 5G bandwidth in bulk through a new 24-7 marketplace. Today's one-off auctions only benefit a handful of big corporations with deep pockets, he says, and those corporations are using this advantage to crowd out competition, stifle innovation, and keep the price of internet high. Declan Ganley, pleasure to have you on NTD Business. Good to be here, Paul. Who has blessed these corporations with this power? It's a thing that um, happened over time and by accident. It wasn't supposed to be this way. We sort of blundered our way into it from the late 1990s. So I remember, um, and I've had this discussion with a, a former chancellor, uh, uh, basically Treasury Secretary of the UK, <clears throat> um, where in the UK, the FCC had done some spectrum auctions in the 90s and the British government watched that and, and Europe watched it. And the way that Europe had issued wireless licenses prior was a so-called beauty contest. So they would give it to the company that committed to the fastest rollout of the network, the lowest tariffs to consumers and the best technology. Now this was in the early days of wireless and licenses were awarded, sometimes not perfectly, but they were awarded on that basis. And that's how Europe, and you, you may remember this, that's how Europe had such advanced wireless networks early on in the game. And we had lots of vendors of equipment. Uh, we had Nokia, we had Ericsson, we had Lucent, we had Nortel, we had Siemens, and many others that were Western producers of equipment for these radio access networks and, and cores. And then it was decided to do, um, instead of granting Spectrum to the companies that would commit to the fastest rollouts and the lowest tariffs, because Spectrum's a natural resource, it's everywhere, governments decided we'll auction this off to the highest bidder, um, the next blocks of Spectrum. So the UK decided that it would do a Spectrum auction and it, it projected that it might raise up to half a billion pounds in doing that in 2000. And when they did the auction, they raised 23 billion pounds. So it was a roaring success in terms of taking in a, an enormous amount of cash from the private sector that had to be funded by private banks and investors and everything else, and handed it over to the government in return for this spectrum. But now these companies are sitting there with spectrum having massively overspent for it, but having paid that money to protect what they already had, which was a franchise, if you like, for mobile uh, telephone service. So, so this spectrum, even though this was a long time ago, this is the same spectrum that we're trying to, to use yes, right yes. now. So, so spectrum is finite, there's so much of it. We started auctioning it off in the really the, the early 2000s um, in, in, in big quantities and that model was continued and what happened is is it did it became a hindrance to innovation so companies would in, take on enormous amounts of debt debts bigger than governments would have and would take on these massive amounts of debt um, and then they would have to figure out how they were going to build a network and pay for that and how they were going to be able to provide service um, that was of some value to the consumer without you know, having to massively overcharge for it. So it, it created, immediately created debt distressed companies that had to find cheaper sources of equipment mm -hmm. and a way to maintain prices as high as possible in order to be able to service the debt that they took on 
to overpay for spectrum in these spectrum auctions. And this went on for a decade and then continued. And these companies became more and more indebted. And the innovation, although we saw innovation and we've seen innovation in, in, in wireless, it became far more constrained than it otherwise would have been. And this spectrum auction model has been a disaster um, for innovation and for um, the, the West's ability to innovate its way out of this because at a point in the late 2000s, it stopped being about getting more spectrum with a view to building it out everywhere and providing ever more innovative services. And it started to be about buying more spectrum to make sure that nobody else got it so that you wouldn't have to face any competition, any price competition. So in America, we went from four operators, you had Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon, and AT&T down to three. I mean, there is supposedly a fourth with DISH, but it's not really a serious contender because the FCC allowed Deutsche Telekom Sprint uh, or T-Mobile to take over Sprint. Deutsche Telekom is the German, formerly state-owned uh, wireless operator uh, that was really captured by Huawei a number of years ago. Um, that is entirely dependent on Huawei in its uh, German markets and European markets, or was, um, and that has been the biggest champion and defender of Huawei in Europe. It has actively lobbied even against the German government um, to make sure that Huawei gets deployed in Europe. They were deploying Huawei 5G in Germany before the German government had even made a decision on whether or not that would be allowed. They were doing it anyway, creating facts on the ground. This company was allowed to take over Sprint in America and is very shortly going to be the largest 5G operator in the United States of America, charging Americans prices that are way higher than what they charge their European customers. And you need to ask yourself a question. How did this happen? Why did this happen? And it happened because it's a cartel, because that cartel has got extremely good at regulatory capture and at protecting itself. And while this is not being done deliberately to help communist China, of course it's not. It's being done to protect prices and protect their, um, their cash flow. The knock-on effect of that is that it has tied America's hand behind its back and taken away its ability to use the most vital tool to beat communist China in the global 5G and 6G domain. And it's done that by building this wall and moat around this cartel to protect itself and capturing the regulatory and legislative authorities, to a large degree, there are noble exceptions to this, um, to a point where it's sometimes difficult for these people to even see outside the box as defined by that cartel. If this happened, may have happened gradually and by accident, like you mentioned, but if you could see it, and, and I'm sure other people saw it, these big corporations saw it too, right? Um, they're bound to have seen the opportunity. Was there certain tactics they use? Is sure. there certain how, how do they how do they how do they get it done? So so yes, they see it, but you've got to remember that none of these companies are run by entrepreneurs. None of them are run by their founders. The sort of closest impression of a, a founder entrepreneur that was done was the former CEO of uh, T-Mobile and what he did to sort of fake it was grow his, he was a Lazard banker previously, He's, he grew his hair down to his shoulders, started wearing leather jackets and pink t-shirts because he thinks that's what an entrepreneur looks like and the, and, and, and went round with this whole sort of we're the disruptor, the, you know, the, the unnetwork or whatever they called themselves, you know, nonsense and it was all about keeping price propped up and uh, so they go through the motions of what they think innovators say and do, 
Um, they're all corporate bureaucrats. And look, corporate bureaucrats are necessary, like all bureaucrats. Bureaucrats are, 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 are um, some of them are very, very good. Corporate bureaucrats are extremely good at making money for themselves. There is no noblesse oblige here. There is no grace of mission. They don't give a hoot whether Huawei wins in the rest of the world or not. It's ultimately about what am I going to get done in my five years at the, as the, at the head of this company? In Randall Stevenson's case, he was the CEO of AT&T until hitting his golden parachute a few months ago. Randall Stevenson was about preventing competition to AT&T, blocking uh, new models and innovation anywhere he could, having the best lobbyists in the world. They don't have the best innovators in the world. In fact, they have no innovators, but they do have the best lobbyists in the world because they know what they have to do is protect themselves from competition. They can't innovate, so they protect. So the A team at AT&T is actually the lobbyists. The C team are the corporate senior executives who are all looking at how do I hit the exit here in five years with $150 million without taking a single risk of one cent of my own money. And they never bet their own money. They're always betting other people's money, but they reward and pay themselves like they're the greatest risk takers in the world. So AT&T went around and decided it wanted to be in the movie business. So it bought HBO, Time Warner, CNN, that whole bag of tricks. And now they're having to sell the whole thing off again. Um, and they're going to leave about a $30 billion hole in their balance sheet. But while they played Let's Make Movies together, they crippled America's ability to be able to properly respond to communist China's expansion in global 5G by making sure that nothing too disruptive happened in America first. And they did that by having the best lobbyists in the world. And that has to change. We're in big trouble in the Western world as crony corporatists capture the regulatory and legislative instruments to stop innovation taking place. The only way we beat communist China in the technology race is by making sure that our own innovators, our own entrepreneurs and our own free markets remain free and untrammeled by the shackles that cartels put on them. That's the biggest threat that we're facing right now. So basically, they want business as usual. They want to prop up the price of a gigabyte as much as possible between now yep. and then. And they want to block out any competition from, exactly. from yourselves that, that, and others. That's exactly right. I mean, if you look at AT, the most profitable division of AT&T is the wireless division. It's got greater than 40% profit margins. Well, why has it got greater than 40% profit margins? margins? Because they, pay, they charge more than double what they should be paying. And of course, that margin is what's paying for all of the fun and games in the movie business. It's what allows you to go to all of the premieres and, 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 and be a big shot you know, in, in Hollywood. It's uh, the average American and poorer Americans who are paying for the inflated egos of these corporate bureaucrats who pretend to be entrepreneurs but never take a risk with their own money and are all about protecting their turf and their price. It seems like something we've been covering a lot recently of this idea of capitalism versus corporatism. Like, like you mentioned, um, this isn't true capitalism in the sense a lot of this is coming through regulation, is coming through lobbying, is coming through government help, and is cutting out the entrepreneurs, right? From, from listening to yourself, Rivada would like to bring a more free market approach Look, to the yeah, 5G. Absolutely right. Adam Smith, a long time ago, warned about, um, ab about the risks of producers um, raising barriers to entry against competition, against innovators. And that's exactly what we have here, um, that the carrier cartel, in my industry's case, have become really the classic definition of rent seekers in the in the, in the, to use an economics term, rent seekers. They're sitting there basically charging a rent and not doing anything for it, anything much, doing the absolute minimum necessary in terms of investment or innovation. 
and all they want to do is make sure that nothing else gets built to be able to compete or threaten uh, their, with their rents. And the biggest enemy of free market capitalism is not communism. I mean, it's a big threat to it, don't get me wrong. But at least communism is kind of obvious. It's got its red flag on top of it. It says it wants you know, to put the state first. It's, it says on the tin what it believes in. And that's useful. A, 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 an enemy or a competitor that defines itself um, as being against what you are is useful because you know, we know where the lines are drawn. The problem with crony corporatism is these crony corporatists pretend to be free marketeers. You know, they use the same language, they wear the t-shirts, they'll put the leather jackets on, grow their hair down here to look like they're some kind of technology innovator. Um, and they go through the motions and they say all the right things, but they're actually the enemy within. So they're much more dangerous because the average person looking at this and that has been looking at the cancer of crony corporatism over the last 12 years in particular, um, they look at this and they say, that's capitalism. This is capitalism that is rigging the system. Capitalism is the reason that young people can't afford to buy a house for themselves anymore. Capitalism is the reason that um, there is such massive disparity in wealth uh, between uh, a, a retired CEO who never risked a penny of his own money in his life. I, I don't mind a, 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 an entrepreneur going out and risking their own money and their time and their reputation and doing extremely well. God bless them, I hope they make bazillions. But looking at that gap, the average person is thinking, the system is against me, it's not giving me equal access to opportunity, it's denying me that, it's favoring these guys, that's capitalism. It's not capitalism. Capitalism, or free market capitalism, doesn't do those things. Crony corporatism, cronyism does do those things. Cronyism basically says, I want a free market till I've got all the money and then the free market ends and I get to keep it. <laughs> and I get to raise all the barriers that I can and build up walls so you don't get a fair shot at being able to compete for this and come up with better ideas. And we are in that stage now, a stage of crony corporatism that's going to take some courageous um, leadership to break that logjam. I believe it will happen. It has to happen. Um, but the knock-on effects of that are actually undermining public faith in free markets. What happens when somebody like yourself comes along and starts to challenge the, the old guard and tries to bring the prices down and inject innovation? Well, what happens is, is, is they will run around uh, governments um, in, in various parts of the world and tell them that, you know, Rivada or, you know, those guys are, you know, they're wild and, you know, they're, 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 their claims of being able to drop the price of cellular are exaggerated and, you know, this technology has not been deployed uh, extensively in, in country X or Y and nobody knows for sure if this will work, which, you know, all of these things have a, a thread of truth in them around which giant lies are spun. Yes, the technology has not been widely deployed yet, but it will be wild. But the reason it hasn't been widely deployed yet is because they've been fighting an enormous rearguard action to make sure that it doesn't. But when that te technology is fully deployed, um, it's going to revolutionize what the wireless industry in a way that's going to change the world for all of those guys. Now, by the way, it's going to be good for their shareholders. Um, any of these big carriers like AT&T or, or, or any of them, uh, T-Mobile, Vodafone, they're sitting on vast amounts of spectrum, which if opened up to a full open access wholesale uh, wireless model that clears all of the capacity all of the time, they'll end up being more valuable companies. And I can see two big benefits for Americans. Basically, the, the price of a gigabyte, the price of their internet is going to drop, but at the same time, Without that price drop, 
we're not going to be able to innovate, bring in all of these Internet of Things, do all of this innovation and techno technological advancement that's, that's really needed to compete with, as you mentioned, communist China, who are very, very vocal and aggressive in the 5G space. But from listening to you, it seems that with this crony capitalism, or crony corporatism, as you call it, we're not going to be able to, to compete in that space as effectively as we would have. So how, what does this mean for this US, China, or West versus communist China? We are already three years behind the curve from where we needed to be. And every month because that goes, of this. because of this, and every month that goes by where this is not done, we fall further behind. I say we lose an, every month we don't do it, we lose three more months. Um, and there are tools that the US and the West is using that are very effective. The State Department has been phenomenal. Given the instruments and the tools that they have had available, they've, they've been very effective. Um, they could have been 50 times more effective had they had available to them better tools. I mean, Boris Johnson uh, was on record a couple of years ago when the big Huawei debate was going on in the UK. He said, what's the alternative? And he knew there was one, um, but he wanted to hear it being voiced. But the alternative was not being clearly voiced because the cartel was back here in Washington DC saying, well, you can't do that. Um, that has got to stop. And I think it will. I think the realization has set in, I know the realization has set in, in many capitals across the Western world that the cartels that were trying to protect the price of capacity are actually harmful to the West's interest, that they need to stop listening to them, that they need to really increasingly listen to disruptive innovators like Rivada Networks, I'll dare to say, and they are doing that, and that these new models are the future. And to the point that you made earlier, that if you really want to have smart cities and an internet of things that's more than slideware or something that somebody says in a speech, you're not going to have any of those things unless the price of those things accessing the network dramatically drops. How about from a defense perspective? The implications are massive, absolutely massive. And by the way, while China has still got an edge, and it has, you do this and their edge will disappear. And it will disappear in about six months. They will not be able to turn their... They've bet the farm on the West continuing to be stupid about this and to continue to do the same thing. And that's a big bet. So they are continuing to bet that we're going to stick with dumb one-off spectrum auctions and that we're going to continue to protect these cartels. All we have to do is stop doing that. And the, the bet that communist China has taken on 5G and 6G blows up. Now, they're not going to be gone away, and they won't be gone away in six months but they're going to be on the back foot rather than on the front foot. Do we see China trying to influence these decisions Absolutely. in the West? How? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the way they influence them, uh, there are many ways. But one way I can talk about is that they offer financing packages to these carriers, these traditional carriers, not in America, but, but elsewhere. So take Deutsche Telekom that owns T-Mobile. The fact that Deutsche Telekom can get extremely attractive, really off-market financing from backed by the Chinese government um, to, to deploy Huawei 5G equipment in Europe gives them much more scope in America, even though they're not using Huawei in America. Obviously, it gives them more flexibility. It gives them a bit more money. It gives them more, more scope. And mark my words, if this path continues, some of the same characters that we see now in this industry lobbying in other parts of the world that have been lobbying other parts of the world for Huawei will be doing it right here in the United States. And that might sound silly right now, but there were people lobbying for Huawei in Washington DC up until very, very recently, and they'll be back again. But it doesn't matter 
as much what happens in the United States. If you can stop the US from making the big move or the big change, the only place capable of disrupting the wireless market globally now is the West's largest market that has scale, that's the United States. And if you can make sure that nothing happens in the United States that's going to bring a disruptive model to the rest of the world, you've already won more than half the battle. So you just need to keep them sort of in their, in their, on their side of the, the, the ocean, not doing anything too smart, not doing anything too dramatic. And if you can then continue to support the traditional carrier one-off spectrum model in Europe, in Latin America, wherever else you can, so that you're subsidizing these carriers to win these one-off spectrum auctions, and then they become dependent on you for equipment and financing, it's like that game go. I mean, you, you, you don't win by taking America, the, the, the America's chess piece off the table, but you take everybody else's and you surround it, at which point it's lost. And that's what's been going on in the 5G, 6G battle uh, against communist China. If America introduces the disruptive model, um, the, whole, the whole thing changes. I mean, New Street Research, uh, who are very respected uh, analysts of the wireless field, you know, they talked about this at the end of last year, and they said, if this happens, they said, all bets are off. Everything changes. All the predictions that people have been making will be, have to be reassessed. It's, it will be that dramatic of a change. And um, without being, um, without being overly confident, I believe that we are at the point where this is inevitable, where it will happen, because it has to happen. It should have happened three years ago. It's become more and more obvious that this is what is needed. And therefore, I think we're going to see this happen very soon. It's a great place to leave it. Declan Ganley, thank you. Thank you.